The following sponsors support public television and Hello Paradise. Los Arboles Hotel, located in the Palm Springs Historic Movie Colony District. Tiled floored rooms, a courtyard pool, jacuzzi, event spaces, and El Mirasol Cocina Mexicana Restaurant. LosArbolesHotel.com Grand Residences, a welcome escape from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. With an array of services, amenities, and surprises. Grand Residences in Cancun, Mexico. Sponsored in part by Czech Tourism. The heart of Europe. The land of stories. Czech Tourism is a proud sponsor of KVCR. Hi, I'm Joni Ravenna. Welcome to another edition of Hello Paradise. We're coming to you this week from Indian Wells and what can only be described as an oasis of luxury, the Renaissance Resort and Spa. We'll take a close up and personal look at this five-star resort in a little bit, but first, let's see what else is on tap in this week's show. First up, we have a Desert Cities report you're certainly not gonna wanna miss. In our featured interview, our guest today is someone with a lot to say and a story that will have you riveted. And then we'll whet your appetite for fine food in our Eat, Drink, and Be Merry segment. And finally, we're off to an exotic getaway. All of that and more on this week's episode of Hello Paradise. Resort and Spa, set amidst the backdrop of the Santa Rosa Mountains, and the ambiance here is one of relaxed elegance. Later on, we'll show you the spa and their award-winning restaurant, Scirocco. But for now, let's take a look at our first Desert Cities report. My name is Mara Getz, and we are here in beautiful Indio, California, which is just down the road a little bit east of Palm Springs, California. This morning, we have a wonderful opportunity to talk to a very groovy horsewoman by the name of Allison Brooke Bly. So, let's go find Allie. Allie, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Doing great, thank good you. Good to see you. What a beautiful morning. <laughs> It and is. this is your horse. This is the love of my life. Oh. This is Jose. Jose. His name is Jose. Jose de Guadalajara. <laughs> <laughs> a very appropriate name. He is a beautiful, beautiful animal. Thank you. How gorgeous. How long have you had Jose? I've had Jose for almost seven years now. We're here to talk to you, Allie, and about your passion for horses. You originally hail from Alaska. Yes. How did you experience horses up in Alaska? Did you grow up near them or tell us a little bit about that? I, I, I did. I had a best friend who lived on a farm, on a 10 acre farm, and I came out of the womb obsessed with horses. And so, although I was very sad that my best friend was leaving to go live on a farm, I got the best benefit of it because I got to be around farm animals whenever I was with her. So, um, then finally I got to get my own farm animal. <laughs> So, from Alaska, when did you uh, when did you leave Alaska then and, and come here, Allie? I left Alaska when I was 25, mm -hmm. and I came down here and I was seasonal, and so I would come down here and I got him my first year here, and so I would train about six months out of the year and then go back up to Alaska, but now I'm here full time. <laughs> it's a, it's a, a lot, lot of, of responsibility, and I couldn't do it without my trainer. My, I, have, I have two trainers. I have Don, oh. and then I have his daughter, Cindy, who's okay. also a professional rider. So between the two of them, if I'm ever not able to be here, 
he's really well looked after. That's that's Thank great. Goodness. So how long did you train before you actually started jumping and, and doing types of competition with Jose? I started training with Don, I think f we trained for a solid year before I started mm -hmm. competing. Allie's been with me a few years now. Just bring your elbows in, shorten your reins a little, pick him up and push him into your hand. There you go. Let him flex the inside. She's actually looks like a horseback rider now. <laughs> when people see her, and I've had a lot of people comment on, uh, gee, she rides well. So, which tickles me to death. Yes. <laughs> so it was a solid year just building mechanics and I really, I knew nothing. My trainers taught me everything. Well, and you, you must have had to build up some physical strength for that too. Yes, because stamina. Because I know it takes a lot of, Don a lot used of to muscles. Don used to call me a marshmallow when I first started. <laughs> Come on, you marshmallow. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Marshmallow. So to this day, sometimes, yeah. You're still soft. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes he'll say, Come on, marshmallow. I'm like, oh, I'm coming. Okay, okay. I mean, it must be a very powerful feeling. To, in a very closeness. Tell me about that. Tell well, we've come a long way, and so part of riding is feel, and that's something Don talks to me about all the time: is how does he feel? What kind of you know, what kind of horse do you have underneath you? So, the other day we came out and we were jumping, and he just was a little plug. I mean, he was. I just had I had nothing underneath me, but I could feel that, and so we tried to get him, you know, amped up so that he so that we could make it over fences and jump well. But you never really know every day. You can be in a certain mood and ready to jump and ready to go yeah. after it, but you might show up and he's not. That's that's very curious. I mean, I've I've only had dogs and cats. Although I come from a farm, horses really do have a personality. They don't do. They? they do. Yeah, and it's not one to take for granted. So we try to always work with the horse and work through whatever issue may arise. Whether it's you have too much of a horse, he's too wound up, or you don't have enough of a horse. Or now, is Jose a one-woman horse? Yes. <laughs> yes. He is. He looks like he is. He looks very happy when you're around, Allie. Oh, thank you. Oh. Yeah. And tell me now, what are these fancy little, uh, mm -hmm. those little, they look like they're kind these of... These are bell boots. Gucci or something. Yeah, I don't these, know. Are, <laughs> these are bell boots, and we put them on him so that when he is at a canter or a trot, we don't want his back leg to reach forward too far and hmm. pull off his horseshoe. So that's what the bell boots are for. Oh my God, you know, there's so many things we don't realize. So, and now, you know, working a full-time job like you do and taking care of Jose, which is just mm -hmm. like, he's a really a friend. He is my best friend mm -hmm. for certain. If you had a, a lifetime dream, would you, uh, would you have a ranch? If I, could have, if I could have my trainer, Don, and Cindy live on the ranch with me, yes. Otherwise, it's a lot of responsibility, so I would need somebody like that. A lot of responsibility. Mm -hmm. Well, since you, you know, working in the real estate business around here, you might have the perfect opportunity to find that. I, I work with a lot of equestrians. Uh, that's predominantly what my business is built on. So I do end up, we're always talking about land, we're always talking about farms, yeah. always looking at, I had that's a client call me not too long ago looking for a farm. So. You've it's a nice marriage between yes. the two because horses are my favorite and horse people are my favorite people. So, and I love real estate, so it just kind of marries all three together. Yeah. Yep. So, how wonderful. Thanks so much, Allie. It was so great to meet you and your best friend, Jose. You guys keep on riding, and we'll see you out there on the trail. There are several restaurants on site at the Renaissance, including a pool bar open for lunch and dinner and an outdoor retreat serving appetizing snacks and refreshing drinks. But my favorite has got to be Scirocco, an Italian restaurant open for dinner and providing a very romantic atmosphere and impeccable service. Scirocco offers fine dining from the Massignani family, featuring authentic Italian cuisine from the hills of Tuscany and the canals of Venice. We're here with Livio Massignani, the chef at Scirocco. Livio, what will you be preparing today? I'm going to prepare for you a little uh, simple dishes, which is a pappardelle alla boscaiola. Normally use the mushroom, which I have the wild mushroom from Italy. And the pasta, obviously, we make right here as a bread and everything. You've been fascinating to talk to. I can't imagine anyone too much more interesting, but we're going to find out who we're talking to in our featured interview. 
We're really excited to be joined by Erica Stone, who is the founder of Soldiers Organized Services, and you provide Marines and their families rides from the airport to the 29 Palms base, Marine base, correct? Yes. So Erica, where were you born? San Diego, California, so I'm definitely a California girl. And what was your childhood like? What was it like growing up? My daddy was a older, cranky cowboy from Wyoming, World War II vet, ah. and my mother was from uh, La Jolla, California. Mm -hmm. So I had a very interesting childhood between San Diego, Northern California, but um, between there and Wyoming. Mm -hmm. So I was a California cowgirl. So what was so you were exposed to the military fairly young and sort of sort of that mindset mentality? Well, my daddy was a World War II vet and mm -hmm. World War II vets it's a different era I think with um individuals for the fact that they knew they were American heroes. My daddy knew mm -hmm. that he was an American hero. Mm. So growing up in in that realm very patriotic Right. Um, you know, because I know what my father went through. I know what his brothers went through. So tell us the story of how Soldiers Organized Services came to be. Okay. So in January of 2007, I was working at Home Depot, and mm -hmm. one of my mother's friends uh, was down at the airport volunteering, and she asked me to cover her shift. So mm -hmm. I go down there, and um, there's a facility there in the airport where uh, Marines can hang out as they come and go. Right. And the gal was locking up the office and a young Marine came in, panicked, first duty station, had to report by midnight. And he had $60 in his pocket and his only option was to take a taxi, but mm -hmm. a taxi back then was 120. Mm -hmm. Now it's 150 to 180, one yeah. way from Palm Springs Airport to the 29 right. Palms Marine Base. So I take him up. It was such a delight to know that I was able to help this young man that didn't mm -hmm. know anything. It was his first time California and so I decide I'm gonna go back down again and I'm gonna you know really help these guys when they come in and again the gal was uh, closing up the office there where they hang out and this Marine was different and every time I tell this story I picture this Marine with a halo and wings as he walks through the store because uh, this young man had been shot in the leg in Iraq fell off a building he had a whole hip cast he had his crutches his wow. sea bags wow. now he had flown into the airport and he'd missed the little bus that went up to the base mm -hmm. um, so he was gonna sit in the airport for 23 hours till the next bus came with a shattered leg ma'am I don't want to inconvenience you and I was like, inconvenience mm. me. I, I don't. I, I couldn't process what he was saying. Same, you're, yeah. you're sitting here with a shattered leg and crutches, mm -hmm. and you don't want to inconvenience me to give you a ride to the base. So rewarding, and dropped him off. Uh, inspirational. He was so proud to be a Marine, and he. Uh, there was no bitterness. There was no animosity about what had happened. He mm -hmm. just wanted to, you know, to get uh, go through therapy, get back there with his unit, and. Um, uh, keep serving his country. So I dropped him off that night and I got really emotional because mm -hmm. back to my daddy. Sure. Um, my daddy was born in 1926 and he passed away about 12 years ago now and before he passed away he had a stroke and he mm. would just sit in his pickup all day long waiting to take me somewhere. Old cranky cowboy from Wyoming. Mm -hmm. And I got really emotional because my daddy was also shot in the leg mm. in World War II. Wow. And I pulled off the side of the road and I just remember crying and crying and all these emotions were going through me and I go, my daddy would have loved to have done what I just did. Mm -hmm. He would have loved it. Yeah. So the next morning I wake up, I tell my mom, guess what, I'm going to start driving these Marines and I need you to pay for the gas. And so uh, May of 2007, the Desert Sun did a little article in the paper mm -hmm. about local women. Right. And we went from a handful of little, my girlfriends, yes. to 63 volunteers. Since then, you know, now we are established to a 501c3 right. and um, go through um, all the steps necessary to be a nonprofit. Yeah. We transported almost 4,000 within seven weeks this last holiday season, mm -hmm. which is more than we transported our first two and a half years. For us to be able to say thank you and, and no strings attached and be able to, you know, tell these young servicemen and women, Thank you for your service. And we appreciate and it. Yeah. We appreciate it personally. Mm -hmm. The the huge impact of this, though, that we've made um, almost 20,000 trips. So there's 20,000 different stories mm -hmm. of the impact that we've been able to make on these young men and women. And if every Marine or wife um, or child would have taken a taxi, it would have cost them over mm -hmm. nine 
million wow. dollars. You paid Erica too. Stone, thank you so thank much. You thank so you so much. The Renaissance Resort and Spa is a distinctive blend of contemporary and classic styles in what might appear to be a mirage in a desert oasis. This luxury resort promises to pamper its business and leisure guests alike. Each guest room has a private balcony offering spectacular views of either the mountains or the pool area. We're outside near their pool and they have one of the very few sandy beaches out here in the Coachella Valley. It's fabulous and let me tell you, as far as service, I'm going to have this drink filled up faster than you can say, eat, drink, and be merry. That's our next segment. Check it out. Hello, how are you doing today? My name is Eric Wadlin. Today I'm here to do Chef Surprise, and uh, I got a little surprise. We'll see what we do. They've brought some scallops, some beef, some mushrooms, cheeses, lots of fresh herbs. Uh, I interviewed the ladies, they like spicy, uh, seafood, vegetables, so I'm going to incorporate that, lots of layers. So here we go, I'm going to start cooking and see what we come up with. We need to roast these beets. Put a little bit of olive oil in there. And then we need uh, simple salt and pepper, which I don't know where the salt and pepper is in this kitchen. Ah! Put lots of salt in there, because we're going to roast it and pull the skin off anyhow. Give it a little toss. Put it in our Pyrex. So I got this oven at 400 degrees uh, for roasting. I have the top oven at 400 and the bottom oven at 350. Top more for roasting, the bottom more for cooking. Okay, so what I have here is I have the poached beets and I'm gonna add orange juice to it. What I'm gonna make is a beet oil or a beet reduction. And that's gonna go on the bottom of the scallops. All right, so we're just going to heat this up, just lightly. So a little salt, low pepper. Cayenne pepper will be great in there. A little cayenne. Work that up. So we got fresh ginger here, and I'm going to clean it up and mince it real quick. If you ever have uh, ginger and you eat it, and it's got that real bitter taste to it, I don't like that bitter taste. So I'm going to get rid of that bitter, bitter taste, and the best way to get rid of that bitter taste a little bit of wine, a little sugar, not too much. Get rid of the tops, the peel of the carrots. Okay, now we're gonna check our beets. We're gonna see how they're doing. All oh, these look beautiful, nice and roasted. That's gonna give a nice another flavor, a nice depth of flavor. Our ginger's going along good. Our carrots are cooking along. You gotta take this muscle off, because this mu muscle is 125% unedible. Uh, when I got called to do this chef surprise, they told me I could bring any ingredient I wanted. Uh, I didn't bring any ingredient because I knew that I could just make pretty much something out of whatever was here. But I did bring my knives, and even more importantly, I brought my fish paint. All right, so we got our nice scallops there, right? Beautiful scallops. And I like to leave the scallops out. The best idea is to get the scallops right up to about room temperature, okay? A little more of the same chili powder that I put in here, so you double up on the flavor. For those are beautiful, huh? We're gonna nice, we're gonna sear these, art, these babies really good. Put the babies around. You don't want to sear them too long, otherwise it'll burn the chili. See the nice color they're getting there? Nice, rich color. What I like about these pans the most is they go right in the oven. Look at those nice carrots, caramelization of the nice ginger butter that's in the bottom. And there are carrots in the middle. This is the, uh, the beet sauce that we made earlier. All right, now our scallops are done. Look at that nice caramelization, the richness came out. Little scallops on there, roasted beets, carrots, ginger, spicy. Let's see if they like spicy really or not, huh? So I made a little fresh uh, orange and the basil. I'm just going to put that right on. A little bit on each one. Is that beef? Do you have a name for this? Oh, oh man. Do you get named all over the place? Mmm. Mmm. Oh, my God. That's how scallops are supposed to taste. We cooked a couple quick dishes here. We had a nice little salad and we had the chili spice shrimp. Uh, hey ladies, how is everything? Everything good? Awesome. 
finally seemed to like it. Well, that was Chef's Surprise. We brought you back to the Renaissance where there is something for the sportsman or woman in all of us. From this oasis, we're off to another place. Let's see where we're going in this week's getaway segment. Our Alaskan fishing adventure began on the small island of Unalashka on the Aleutian chain. Once a Russian outpost on the Bering Sea, it served as a base for the most incredible fishing adventure of my entire life. We're located where the Bering Sea and the Pacific meet, off of Dutch Harbor in the Aleutian Islands. <laughs> as you can see, I'm in trouble. I can't seem to slow this guy down. <laughs> Woo! And if he tries to run, don't put your thumb on the reel. Get over here, partner. Uh, the kind of fish we catch here in Dutch Harbor is uh, the halibut and, and uh, it uh, ranges from, from a two pound fish to something that might go over 300, 400 pounds. And uh, we have a lot of commercial fishermen that fish up here and they come out with some real monsters. Hey! They really set you up here. Got your rain gear on, you got your fighting belt. As soon as the line goes in the water, you got a halibut. In Alaska, they call this a chicken. It's too small to keep. Regarding the, the halibut and how strong they are here in town, uh, there's really, uh, anything you hear is very possible. Uh, these, these fish are totally unpredictable and they are like a 500 pound drunken maniac sailor. Equipped with the latest in global positioning gear, Captain Darrell knew all the honey holes. After hooking up to a dozen fish at our first location, we headed further south in search of monster halibut. Right. Got another one. Yeah, that's a big one. This guy had his Wheaties this morning. Woo! Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. Challenge. Break the pole. Instead of losing? Instead of losing the fish. Instead of losing the pole. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's a hand crank. Yeah, it's a good one. You gotta crank it. <laughs> Holy for Jesus! That's another hawk! Right, right by me. Right on the water. Right on the water. My way. My way. My way. My way. My way. My way. big uh, not only weather but we also have ocean differences we have two bodies of water uh, one's the Pacific Ocean which is, is to the south here and then we have the Bering Sea which is to the north of here and what we're, we're situated on, on the Aleutian chain we're right in between Action, action, ACT! The weather system in, in Dutch Harbor is uh, we, the Bering Sea in the Pacific, and uh, not only the two different weather systems, we also have two different water temperatures. We have the, the warm current from the south, and we have the cold from the north. 
and uh, I think it really makes a real ideal place for fishing. There's a big biomass here in town. And what we have, we have a lot of cod, we have a lot of herring, big octopus, and uh, this feed that halibut just absolutely love. Well, that's going to do it for this week. We sure hope you had a good time. Be sure and tune in next week for more fabulous resorts, fascinating people, and great places to shop, dine, and play. Until then, this is Joni Ravenna saying goodbye, Paradise. hair provided by Heads Up Hair Design, located at 460 South Palm Canyon Drive in Palm Springs. Heads Up is a full service salon and day spa located in the heart of downtown Palm Springs. Riccio's Steak and Seafood, a family tradition in downtown Palm Springs, supports public television. The Desert Entertainer proudly supports public television and KVCR. Grand Residences, a welcome escape from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. With an array of services, amenities, and surprises. Grand Residences in Cancun, Mexico. Sponsored in part by Czech Tourism. The heart of Europe. The land of stories. Czech Tourism is a proud sponsor of KVCR.